Okay, we are off to uh, chapter nine as we finished up talking about types of reactions uh, in the last chapter, which is chapter seven. Uh, so we're now going to sort of put together a couple of uh, topics from the last previous chapters, uh, the sort of balancing equations, uh, the grams and moles, and we're going to basically talk about doing calculations from equations. Uh, and this is what's referred to as stoichiometry, uh, where we can, if we know sort of the reaction we're doing and the equation we're doing, and we know, for example, how much we're starting with or how much we produce in a particular uh, reaction, we could use the equation and the amounts to figure out how much of other reactants you may have uh, needed to react with, how much other products you might have produced. So the basis of this really is involves always uh, when we're doing these type of stoichiometry things, the very first thing you always want to make sure that you have is a balanced equation. And again, none of this will work correctly if you're not starting with a balanced equation. So just a few reminders about the balancing of equation, which is, uh, you know, if you do not see any coefficients in that equation, you probably should take a pretty good look at it to make sure that a, either it is balanced and if it's not, that you do balance it. I would say that if you do see some coefficients, it's probably going to be balanced in most cases, uh, but you should still probably take a look at it. Um, and the relationships that we can get from the equation that we might have saw in a previous chapter here are some of these relationships here. And a lot of these relationships are based off of the coefficients. And here, uh, the two, the one, and the two, uh, we could say, for example, uh, two molecules of H2 react with one molecule of O2 uh, to produce two molecules of H2O. The real relationship that we use in stoichiometry pretty much is this relationship here. This is sometimes referred to as like the mole-to-mole -mole relationship. And it is, again, just the coefficients. So we can say that two moles of H2 react with one mole of O2 to give us two moles of H2O in this case. And in stoichiometry, that is pretty much like the relationships that we're going to use. Uh, this relationship here is obviously if we start with a certain number of grams of reactants and we have the law of conservation of mass, means we should end up with the same amount of products there because each of them have the same mass, basically. Uh, so six carbons on the left will equal the six carbons in terms of the mass on the right-hand side. So when we talk about stoichiometry, these type of problems, uh, we oftentimes can figure out a lot of things in these equations. Uh, like I said, if we had an equation, say, like this, you know, if we knew something about A, we could figure out how much B that we would also need to put in there with it. We could also figure out how much C, how much D that we would need to produce. Uh, same thing as well, you know, if we knew how much we produced of D, we could also use that to figure out how much of C we would also produce, how much of B and A we would uh, start with. So we can use the equation as the relationship and that is sometimes what people get a little freaked out about in terms of stoichiometry. They think it's a really wacky thing going on, but it's really not. What it really is, is stoichiometry is nothing more than really a conversion factor. And instead of going to like a table to see that 12 inches equals a foot, where you get your conversion factor from is the actual balanced equation. And that is why the equation always needs to be balanced when you're doing it. And the reason we need to do that is, in most stoichiometry problems, you're given information about somebody in the equation that you're really not interested in. So you need a way to go from the thing you're not interested in in the equation to the one in the equation you are interested in. So really, you can think of stoichiometry as really nothing more than just a conversion factor. And again, instead of looking something up in a table to get that conversion factor, you basically get it from the actual equation that allows you to do it. Um, now the units of stoichiometry, and we will probably hit all of these units along the way as we get into some other chapters, uh, we could do basic sort of stoichiometry here with grams and moles, which is a very common one and a reminder, uh, to go from grams to moles, right. Or moles back to grams. That is the molar mass, right. From the periodic table. 
in grams per mole that we use as a conversion factor to do that. And that is used a lot in stoichiometry. Later on, when we get into gases, uh, we will use liters and pressure and volumes. Um, and also in solutions, we'll use molarity and volumes and stuff like that. So we could do stoichiometry in all kinds of situations and we will see it sort of pop up in all situations. The good news is pretty much it's the same sort of calculation regardless of the situation. There's sort of basic steps that you do when you do stoichiometry problems. We use what is referred to as the mole method, uh, which is that relationship that we get from the actual equation that's balanced. And again, it really is nothing more than the coefficients there. So these are really kind of uh, the five steps to a stoichiometry problem, a basic stoichiometry problem. In most cases, it really will boil down to four steps, but let's talk about all these steps here. The first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you write the correct formulas for the reactants and products. So I will say in a lot of cases, you may not have to do this first step. And that is because in a lot of cases, the actual equation is given to you. But if the equation is not given to you and you have it all in words or something like that, you need to make sure again that you get all the correct formulas down. And then really the first thing that you usually want to do is balance that equation once you have the right formulas. You then want to convert whatever they give you to grams and then grams to moles is essentially where you want to go. That is where you're going to use your molar mass to do that. The next step is really the stoichiometry step, which is the mole to mole relationship. And you get that from the equation. And lastly, if you do all these steps correctly, at this point, you should be in the units of moles. And if you do want the answer to be in moles, you're done. But a lot of times you don't want the answer in moles. Maybe you want it in grams or some other unit. Uh, so usually on the back end here, we have to convert those moles to some other unit. And a lot of times molar mass is used on the back end of the calculation to figure out how many grams, for example, maybe you produce. So really, like I said, you could kind of simplify the basic stoichiometry steps to this. Always just balance the equation. You want to convert to moles. You want to do the mole to mole relationship. from the equation. And lastly, you wanna take those moles to some other unit if necessary. So if you just remember those four steps, pretty much any stoichiometry, basic stoichiometry problem that you come across, you just follow the steps in order. And as we'll talk about as we go through it, you wanna make sure that you follow the steps in order you don't want to go backwards. So sometimes people do weird things when they're doing these problems. So if something is done for you, just keep going forward on the steps. Don't go backwards. What I mean by that is maybe you're given things in moles, so you don't have to convert it to moles. But sometimes people will unconvert it from moles and then reconvert it back into moles for some weird reason. <laughs> so again, if it's already kind of done for you, just kind of continue to go forward. So these are really the four basic steps for a basic kind of stoichiometry problem. Uh, and let's take a look at an equation like this. Yes. Uh, molar mass is grams per mole. Uh, and atomic mass is uh, really uh, AMU per atom. They're numerically equal to each other, right? And most of the time when we go to the periodic table, uh, we take it as the molar mass, which are grams per mole, because grams is a more useful unit that we use. Obviously, when you go to like the balance and you weigh things out, right, they're in grams rather than AMU and stuff like that. But they're numerically equal to each other. Um, but molar mass means it's really how many grams there are per mole, basically. Yeah, so that's where you get it. It's the number on the bottom of the, the periodic table, if you're asking, yeah. It, it will, yeah. So usually it'll ask you something like, you know, how many grams did you produce? Or, you know, if it wanted something else, like later chapters, it may say like how much volume of this gas did you produce or something like that. So usually they will give you uh, kind of the units that they want at the end of it. If it doesn't specify, I, I would say it would be 
pretty unusual for a stoichiometry problem not to specify kind of like that final unit. Um, but again, if they didn't, technically you could probably leave in any unit you want, but I would say pretty much always in these type of problems, they'll definitely kind of tell you what unit it is. Other questions? All right. So, uh, let's look at this equation here and let's talk about how we get the sort of stoichiometric relationships. And they're sometimes referred to as being stoichiometrically equal to each other and these sort of relationships that you get. All the relationships when you're doing stoichiometry, again, always occurs from a balanced equation. And the only thing that you really need to be concerned with in the balanced equation is the actual number, so the coefficients. So when we look at this, we could say that for every two moles of CO that I toss in there, I'm going to also need to toss in there one mole of O2. And again, those are just the coefficients. Also, I can see for every two moles of CO I put in there, I will get out two moles of CO2. And lastly here, for every one mole of O2, I will get out two moles of CO2. These are what are referred to as equalities, you know, like we talked about with conversions. They are stoichiometrically equal to each other. They are equal to each other, clearly not in number, as two does not equal one, but they are equal to each other in terms of proportion of what you need to toss into that equation to get this reaction to occur. So kind of, again, like when you're baking cookies, right? You got to throw so much flour in there, so much chocolate chips, butter, to get like a dozen cookies. That's sort of the idea here. These are, again, the proportions of each of these things that you need to kind of put in there for this reaction basically to take place. Yes, sir. You will not, you'll be given the equation. So from the equation, or I would say in most cases you'll be given the equation, but at some point, if you're not given the equation, you would write the equation and then you would have the equation to use. Yeah, so in reality, uh, it would be more like this, uh, the third step there where you kind of go to the equation to find your mole to mole relationship is where that will kind of occur. Yeah. Now, these are three equalities stoichiometrically equal to each other. And like any sort of regular conversion equality, for each of these equalities, you could really write two conversion factors. And just like we did with like 12 inches equals one foot, you could say that for every two moles of CO, you have one mole of O2, or one mole of O2 gives you two moles of CO. For the second one, you could write for every two moles of CO, you get two moles of CO2, or for every two moles of CO2, you get two moles of CO. And lastly, you could say for every one mole of O2, uh, you have two moles of CO2, or for two moles of CO2, you have one mole of O2. These are obviously our conversion factors. So from this one balanced equation, there are three sort of equalities that you can get, and you have a choice of six conversion factors that you could use in a problem. You will definitely never use all of them. So you're just going to pick whichever one you need for your particular problem. So these are all the ones that are technically available to you. And you would obviously pick the one that you would need to solve the problem with. Any questions on that there? So for example here, let's just say that we uh, started with, actually, let's just say we produced in this case. We produced, uh, we'll just make up a number, 125 sounds good, grams of CO2. We want to know how many grams of O2 did we start with? So just to show you how sort of those four steps work here, let's just kind of do this here, we'll go that way. All right, so obviously step number one, as we talked about, is to balance the equation, which is clearly done for us in this case. 
Step number two is to take whatever they gave you, uh, which in this case is 125 grams of CO2, and we want to convert it to moles. So that would be the second step that we would want to do here. So step number two is going to be converting to moles. And in this case, I do need to do that because I have grams of CO2 given to me and I need the molar mass of CO2. So we would need to go to the periodic table to do that. That's going to be 12.01 uh, for our carbon plus 2 times 16 there for our oxygens. That's going to give us a 4401 grams per mole. So again, that's going to be our conversion factor that we're going to use. Uh, to convert our grams into moles, which is pretty much the first step in a lot of calculations that we do. So we'll take our 125 grams here of CO2, and we're going to use the molar mass opposite here. So grams go on the bottom, 4401 grams per mole CO2, and that is going to get us here Looks like uh, 2.8403 moles of CO2. So that is really the purpose of this step is to get everybody into the correct units. And now I'm in the units of moles. The problem I have with this uh, problem is the only piece of information I was given is about CO2, which is over here. But I'm really interested in the end about O2, right? That is where I want to get to. So I need a way to go from CO2 to O2. And that's what really the stoichiometry part of it is. And that is the third step that we would want to do, which is we would want to go to the equation and find our mole to mole relationship. And really the point is we are given information about CO2 and we're not interested in it, so we need a way to convert it. So this is where the stoichiometry comes into play, and we already did this. Uh, we have the relationship between CO2, which is what they gave us, and O2, which is what we want to find, and I believe it is this relationship right here. Right, That is what we get from the balanced equation, and again, that's going to be the coefficients. Because that is the relationship that we need to use in this calculation, that gave us these two conversion factors as a possibility to use. Which conversion factor should I use in this case? The one on the left or the one on the right? I want to get rid of CO2 and end up at O2. Which one should I use? Yeah, I should use the one on the left, right? Opposites cancel. So we would use, out of these six possible conversion factors, we're really only going to use this one in this particular problem. So that would be our third step here. We're going to take our moles, uh, which is uh, 2.8403 moles of CO2. This right here is the big stoichiometry step. Don't blink, you'll miss it. It is two moles of CO2 and one mole of O2. Once again, that comes from the balanced equation is where that relationship comes from just the coefficients. So we're going to divide that by two, basically. And that's going to give us 1.420, and we'll call it one, mole of O2. At this point, you should always be, after you do this step, in the units of moles, unless you did something incredibly wrong here. So you should always be in moles. In this case, do I want my answer in moles? I do not, right? I want how many grams of O2. So this is the fourth step that we need to do in this calculation, which is now that we're in moles, we actually need to now go back to grams. I should use the molar mass of what thing at this point, though? The molar mass of what, what did I just convert it into? Moles of oxygen. So at this point, I need to use the molar mass of oxygen, not CO2, because we're done with CO2, right? We got rid of it. So now we do need to go back to the periodic table and get the molar mass of O2 to do that. So our fourth step here would be we're going to convert our moles to grams in this case. 
So for O2, that's going to be 2 times our 16. And that's going to give us our 32 grams per mole. So I'm just going to pick that up right here. In this case, we actually want the 32 up on top so that the moles will cancel. And we will end up here with, uh, we'll go with 45.4. That would be our answer. By the way, significant figure-wise, it's got based off of the 125, which is pretty much the only number we had uh, to work with here. These are really the four steps that you would do in any basic stoichiometry problem. Balance the equation, convert to moles, go to the equation to find the mole-to-mole -mole relationship, and then convert those moles into some other unit. Any questions on that there? Now, I personally here, so you could see each of the steps, did the calculation kind of step by step and got an answer after each step. You do not necessarily need to do that. Uh, in fact, I think they like you to do it all in one move. But you could just go from here to here to here and then just obviously give the answer at the end. So if you want to do it all in one calculation, it's all good. I personally don't care if you break it up into individual parts. But, you know, just you can't do it all in sort of one big calculation without getting answers in between. If you do get answers in between, I would, again, like I did there, not round too much until the very end. Kind of wait till the end to do that. Any questions on any of that there? So, as you can see, we only use really one conversion factor. For credit, what you do need to show is obviously the balance equation and the calculation part on the bottom. If it helps you to write out all the equalities and conversion factors, you could do that, but you don't necessarily need to do that for, you know, any type of full credit. So for full credit, it's really kind of everything down here needs to be kind of shown along the way. Any questions on stoichiometry, how that works? All right. So let's take a look at some here, I think. These are our relationships that we talked about there. All right, so why don't we try this one here. Uh, lithium metal reacts with water to form hydrogen gas and lithium hydroxide. How many moles of hydrogen can be formed by the reaction of 5.32 moles of lithium with water? Give it a go and see what you come up with here again. Make sure that you follow the four steps, which is you need a balanced equation. You need to convert to moles. You need a mole-to-mole -mole relationship from the equation. And you need moles to some other unit. All right, let's take a few moments to see what you come up with. We are not given an equation, but we're given everything in words. Uh, so again, you want to make sure that you get the proper formulas. So lithium metal should be just Li, right, as it has no charge by itself reacts with water, which should be H2O. Uh, to form means you put an arrow. Hydrogen gas is H2, right? Not just H, right? So you want to make sure you got that right. And lithium hydroxide, lithium plus one hydroxide is minus one. Uh, so you should end up with perhaps something that looks like this. Um, I would think uh, maybe like a little balancing now is a proper here. So maybe a two, a two, I feel like I need another two there maybe. I feel like I'm just throwing twos down on the paper here. So we got two lithiums, uh, four hydrogens, four hydrogens and two oxygens. I think I got them all there. Any questions on that? So again, formulas first, then make sure that you balance it. That takes care of really the first step. Now, the next step is to convert whatever they gave you to moles. In this case, uh, we are starting with uh, 5.32 moles of this guy. We ultimately want to get over here to hydrogen. So do I need to do step number two here, convert it to moles? I do not. It's already in moles, right? So that step is done for me. So I am moving through my steps here. Now, in this particular case, we are not interested in lithium. We are interested in hydrogen. And this is where the stoichiometry part of the calculation comes into play. 
we were going to go to the equation and find the relationship between those two. So this step we do need to do, which is step number three, which is really our mole to mole relationship. So from the equation, we see that for every two moles of lithium we put in there, we get out one mole of hydrogen. And once again, that is nothing more than just the numbers, the coefficients from the balance equation. And again, you don't have to write all this, but this will give you an option of two conversion factors to use. One that looks like this, or one that looks the opposite of that, which looks like this. So now we're ready to do our calculation part here. We're gonna take the 5.32 moles of lithium. And in this case, do I wanna use the conversion factor on the left or on the right? Yeah, we do want to go opposite, so we want to use really our stoichiometry conversion factor there. That's going to give us one mole of H2 and two moles of lithium. And that is the big stoichiometry move right there. And we're going to take our 5.32 and divide it by 2. It's going to give us uh, 2.66 moles of H2. That takes care of step number three. Step number four is to convert the moles into some other unit, do I need to do step four in this case? We want to end up with what? We want to end up with moles of H2, which looks like that is where we're at. So we could put a box on it here. We don't actually have to do step number four. If I did want to do step number four, what would I need if I wanted to convert it to grams? I would need the molar mass from the periodic table, right, of H2, if I wanted to convert it into grams. Any questions on those steps there? Okay. Now, what this means is if we threw into this equation 5.32 moles of lithium and everything went perfect, there was no side reactions, you weren't a klutz and dropped anything on the floor, uh, you should produce 2.66 moles of hydrogen that is what is sometimes referred to as a theoretical yield, which is based on the equation, if everything went perfect, how much you should produce in this reaction. Things don't go perfect all the time and don't go perfectly perfect, uh, but that ideally is how much you should get out. And a yield, whenever you see a, the word yield, that means that's how much of a product. It has to be a product in order for it to be some type of yield. All right, let's take a look at another one here, which is a continuation here. Why don't you do this one, same equation, but in this case, we want to know how many grams of H2. If we started with 81.75 grams of our friend lithium, and lithium from the periodic table, as we have three of them hanging in this room, 6.941, I think. All right, take a few moments. And hydrogen, obviously, is 1.008. Give me a moment there. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, so again, here, uh, we are starting with 81.75 grams of lithium. Uh, we eventually want to get to how many grams of hydrogen in this case. So definitely a stoichiometry problem. So uh, from the last time, uh, step number one is already done for us. We have our equation. Uh, we are only given grams of lithium, which means we do need to do step number two, which is convert to moles. So we will take our grams of lithium. Once again, we'll go to the periodic table to use the molar mass here as our conversion factor. Grams need to go on the bottom so that they cancel and end up at moles of lithium. If I do that, 81.75 divided by 6.941, uh, it's going to give us 11.778 moles of lithium. At this point, we have now done step number one, step number two. Step number three now is the stoichiometry part of the calculation. We're going to go to the equation and once again, really find the two things we're interested in. One thing we're interested in is what they gave us. The other thing is obviously what we're trying to find. And it is the same relationship that we saw previously. And we see that 
uh, the mole to mole relationship in this case is going to be for every two moles of lithium, I get one mole of hydrogen. So that is really what I'm going to use next here. So I'm just going to continue on with my number, 11.778 moles of lithium. Here we want to get rid of lithium, and this is what's going to allow us to get to hydrogen by doing the stoichiometry here. The moles of lithium will cancel. So we're going to divide that by two, basically. It's going to give us a 5.8889 moles of hydrogen, which would be step number three. Any questions so far? At this point, if we wanted moles, we would actually be done with the calculation, but we don't want moles, uh, we do want grams. So we do have to do step number four here, which is to take those moles to some other unit. And in this case, we will need the molar mass of H2, which should be two times 1.008, uh, gonna give us 2.016 grams per mole. We're going to use that as a conversion factor to finish this problem here, 5.8889 moles of hydrogen. Here we want the moles to cancel, so that should go on the bottom. And our 2.016 grams there should go up on top. Moles will cancel, gonna give us here 11.87 grams of hydrogen would be produced in this case. And once again, that is a product and that is based off of the calculation. So that is also referred to as a theoretical yield. And that is step number four in this case. Any questions on any of those steps? Once again, as I mentioned earlier, you could do it all in one calculation. Again, you're just kind of showing it to you so you can see all the different steps from there to there to there to there. Again, if you just want to kind of do it all in one calculation, you can as well. Any questions on that there? So what this means is, again, if you were to do this reaction and you threw in there 81.75 grams of lithium and everything went perfect, that is what the expected amount of grams of hydrogen you should get out in this particular reaction. It's really kind of like your maximum amount of product that you should be able to produce if everything went perfect. Any questions on that steps there? <clears throat> Hopefully you can start seeing a pattern that it is just the same four steps. You just want to kind of follow those steps and you should get to the end. Let's take, yeah. Uh, it just means in this case, uh, we are calculating it based off of lithium uh, because it is what will be considered the limiting reagent. It is the one that will determine how much product it will be making. Uh, the water in this case, you could think of, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the chapter, but uh, the water in this case is what is sometimes referred to as the excess reagent. There's plenty of it. So the amount of product that you can make is limited by this case, the lithium, which is why we only have a number for the lithium in this case, yeah. Other questions? No. Continuing on our journey here, let us uh, look at it one more time in case you missed it. That's what I said. All right. We got the same answer. That would be good. All right. Let's try this one here. If you did uh, 765 grams of C6H12O6, what is the mass of CO2 produced? So we want to know how many grams of CO2. Let me give you some numbers here. Carbon, 12.01. Hydrogen, 1.008. And our friend, oxygen, 16. All right, so take a few moments there to see what you come up with here. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, so in this case, we are starting with 765 grams of this guy. And we want to know how many grams of this one. Here, CO2 we're going to make. Uh, definitely a stoichiometry problem. So we do have an equation. It looks balanced. So we are good on that. 
Uh, we do need to do the second step here as we are given ground. So uh, that's going to require us to get our molar mass here of C6H12O6. Uh, so that's going to be 6 times 12.01 for our carbons plus uh, 12 times 1.008 for our hydrogens and plus 6 times 16 for our oxygens. Uh, looks like 180.2 grams per mole, I believe. That, again, is going to be our conversion factor that we get from the periodic table to convert from grams to moles to really put our units in the correct unit so we can do the stoichiometry part. So that's really the purpose of this step. So we'll take our 765 grams of C6H12O6. Uh, we'll put the grams on the bottom here so that everything cancels out correctly. That's going to give us here uh, 765 divided by 180.2, uh, 4.2453 moles of C6H12O6. Once again here, uh, we're not really interested in that. Uh, we are interested in the CO2. So this is where our third step is going to come into play, which is go to the mole-to-mole -mole relationship, as we just did the second and find from really just the coefficients, the relationship between the two things, that's going to allow us to convert from this guy over to our CO2. And from the equation, we can see that for every one mole of our C6H12O6 we put in there, uh, we get six moles of CO2. And again, that is the stoichiometry part just from the equation. We're going to take our number here since I got a number, and that is what we're going to use next to do the stoichiometry part. Again, here we want to go opposite to make sure that they cancel, which means we do need to put the C6H12O6 on the bottom and the six moles of CO2 on top. Again, this is going to do the stoichiometry part for us and allow us to convert from uh, the C6H12O6 into the CO2. Uh, in this case, we will end up uh, with 25.4717, we'll call it, of CO2. Any questions so far? <clears throat> All right, we're almost there. We just did step number three, and hopefully you know we do need to do step number four because we are not in the right units of what we're looking for, which in this case is grams. So the fourth step here to get us to the units that we want, and remember that we have now converted it to CO2, which means we need the molar mass of CO2, and that's going to be 12.01 from the periodic table for our carbon, plus 2 times 16 for our oxygens, going to give us 4401 grams per mole. So to finish up this calculation here, we will take our moles, of CO2, use our molar mass as a conversion factor. So we do want the grams up on top, moles on the bottom so that they cancel. And that is gonna hit us here with a 1121 grams of CO2. Perhaps there's only three significant figures there. So maybe like an 1120 grams of CO2 at this point. This, once again, because this is a product, would be the theoretical yield in this reaction. How many grams of CO2 you would expect to come out in this reaction if you threw in there the 765 grams there of the C6H12O6. Any questions on any of those steps there? All right, then let us try uh, one more here, I think. Let's see what we come up with. All right, how many grams of cisplatin, uh, whose molar mass is 300.1 grams per mole, can be obtained starting with uh, 0.7752 grams of K2PTCL4 molar mass from the periodic table, 415.1 grams per mole. So see what you come up with in this case.
Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. Uh, again, want to follow the same four steps. I got an equation, scary looking one here, but it is balanced, I'm hoping. And obviously in this case here, we are starting with uh, 0 0.7752 grams of this guy. And we want to know uh, how many grams of uh, this one here we will end up with. So we do need to do the second step, uh, which is to take what they gave us basically and convert them into moles. Uh, they were nice enough here to give us the molar mass. Otherwise, you would need to go to the periodic table yourself, obviously, and calculate it. Uh, so we'll do that. So 0 0.77522, before I put the G, I suppose. Let's try that again. Uh, Go five two grams here of K two P T C L four. We're going to use the molar mass that they gave us, uh, which is we want the grams on the bottom four hundred fifteen point one grams per mole. Type out of our uh, K two P T C L four. That's going to cancel out our grams, and this is basically like the second step, right, that we would do. Now, in this case, I'm not going to actually get an answer at this point because I'm just going to kind of show you, again, the whole calculation all together. If you want to get an answer, it's perfectly fine. Just make sure, obviously, uh, you don't round too much. We're now at moles of this uh, guy, and now we want to go from moles of this guy to moles of this guy, and we can see from the equation for every one mole of the K2PTCO4, uh, we get one mole of our product here, which is not too bad. Just a lot of letters, there we go. So once again, if you want to just continue with the calculation, just like in dimensional analysis, we can see the moles of the K2PTCO4s uh, on top. So we would need that on the bottom here to cancel. And up on top would go the one mole of our PT NH32Cl2. That's going to cancel those guys out. And that would be really the stoichiometry step and step number three that we've been doing here. At this point, we have moles of our cisplatin and we want grams. So we do need to use the molar mass of it which again, if it was not given to you, you would need to go to the periodic table to get it. And once again here, using a little dimensional analysis, we want the moles to cancel. So we'll put the moles on the bottom. And the uh, 300.1 grams up on top, the moles will cancel. So again here, if you don't wanna get an answer, you could do it all in one calculation. And in this case, we will end up uh, with 0 0.5604 grams of our cisplatin here, which will again also be a theoretical yield. Again, if you want to do it step by step, get an answer, perfectly fine. Just again, to try not to round too much along the way. Any questions on that there? Now, just to be clear, um, sometimes people also misunderstand sort of stoichiometry. Um, again, if you have an equation, you could definitely go as we did in some of these. Yeah, a question. You could do it each separate steps and just get an answer after each one. It's perfectly fine, yeah. Uh, but if you want to combo all the steps together, you could do it in one calculation as well. Yeah. So when you're doing stoichiometry, as we did in a couple of these examples, we definitely could go from the left-hand side of the arrow to the right-hand side of the arrow. We could do the relationship between those. We could also, as we did in the very first one, go from the right-hand side of the arrow to somebody on the left-hand side of the arrow. We could also stay on the right-hand side of the arrow and do it between the two products. We could also stay and do the relationship between the two reactants. So you don't always have to kind of cross over the arrow to do like the mole to mole relationship. You could stay on one side, you could do it on the other side or any of those things. Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, to answer your question is if you did it like this, 
you, that was what you would need to show, basically that calculation. Or you could do a step-by-step -step like we did previously and get an answer after you want. But you do need to show that work, at least, yeah. Other questions? So again, we could do the relationship between any of the things here. And for example, here we figured out how many moles have we produced of this guy. By knowing the moles that we produce of this guy, we could then just do a relationship between those two. And we can very easily figure out how many moles of the other guy that we would produce and how many grams of the other guy. So again, you don't always have to cross the arrow when you're doing stoichiometry. Uh, you can stay on the same side of the arrow and you can go from right to left, left to right, stay on either side. Any questions on this? These uh, examples that we just did here is what I would classify as basic stoichiometry problems. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit more complicated stoichiometry problems next time. Uh, but these are pretty much the four steps you should just always follow when you're doing any type of stoichiometry calculation. Any questions on any of that? All right. I think it's actually a good place to lay it up here for today.